to be contaminated marine mammals on the planet. Here we are to blame. Everybody is really hoping it, it's this is not um, a pattern. And that is the fate of our orcas. It's clear we're going to lose. We've got a lot of things going on with our Salish Sea right now that require our attention. It's desperate. Our Salish Sea is dying. And those Kukwalamachin, those orcas, those are the ones that tell us if we will remain here on Earth or we will leave. I've always loved orcas. I watched Free Willy when I was a kid, and then I probably watched it another hundred times after that. Their complex social bonds and empathetic nature, something that scientists are only just beginning to understand, that fascinates me. I was 10 when I saw killer whales here in the Sailor Sea. And I dreamt of becoming a marine biologist. Growing up, my dad worked at a zoo. He'd tell me stories about the animals he'd spend time with each day. He taught me to see the wild world with a sense of curiosity and appreciation. Playing in the dirt with bugs, that's always been my happy place. I never liked science class, so I didn't think it would be possible to become a marine biologist. But when I found out the Salvin resident killer whales were endangered, I knew I had to do something. So I went to the west coast to monitor their health. But the orcas I remember seeing as a little girl were now a rare sight. I went to study engineering, but university wasn't exactly for me and I started a wildlife conservation project. It ultimately led me to the West Coast to learn about a species that I knew little about, orcas. And the more I learned about these charismatic apex predators, the more I connected with them, the coast, and my childlike wonder for the wild. The disappearance of orcas on the coast is not unlike the disappearance of so many species around the world today. We're living in a time of mass extinction. Elena and I met out on the water. We had each set out on our own to protect these orcas. And we came together with a shared purpose. But at that time, Glory and I didn't realize that these orcas were on the brink of extinction the tipping point, and this coast needed us to change. We set out to tell the story of the southern resident killer whales. But this story isn't ours to tell alone. It belongs to the entire coast, to communities with roots shallow and ancient, to every person whose lives intertwine with the orca. This is a story about extinction that we all take part in. There's a lot we have to learn from these orcas. So we spoke with those who know them best. Rama swam 100 kilometers around Salt Spring Island to raise awareness about the Salvin residents. Jay Julius, an elected leader in his community, is fighting to preserve the Salish Sea for the next seven generations. And Tasley and Gary, they spend most of the year on the water, researching, educating, and advocating for these orcas. What makes the Southern residents so incredible? How much time do we have? There really is something magical about them. They're so beloved. They're so intelligent. They're just magnificent, charismatic animals. 
They really show us what family is. They really show you what love is. They show you what teamwork is. They show you what survival is. They show you so much. I know they've taught me a lot. And uh, to me, they're Kuthalmachtin. And I know it sounds silly when you call them a relative, but I'll tell you this, this blood that runs through my veins and um, my lineage and my family has been one with Kuthalmachtin since, since time immemorial. They do live in these big family groups. And the bond between the mother and the offspring, how can you not love that? Big adult males especially, being so closely bonded to their mothers, it's extraordinary. Having that experience where the orca actually came right next to me, slowed down, and we had this moment where our eyes met, um, it was such a powerful moment, and I can only say that I felt so deeply seen. If we were going to understand why the southern resident killer whales were verging on extinction, we had to meet with Ken Balcom, the world's leading expert on these orcas. I'm Kenneth Balcom. I'm the senior scientist here at the Center for Whale Research and I've been studying these whales since 1976. We'll give you a little tour of what we do currently and then uh, we can come back down to the lower lab and that's where we have the history. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is Mia, and this is Dave. Yeah, and this is where we download the pictures and uh, put them into their files as to individual folders. And uh, I think Mia's up, you're doing the eye patch cattle. Yeah, you know, we not only use the dorsal fin and saddle as to individual ID, but um, also the eye patch. He says just K and L there? K and L and Jay's oh, here behind you. Perfect. I can show you the uh, family tree of J Pod. Back when we began the study in 1976, you know, we had these J1, J2, J3, J4, 5, 6, 7. The southern resident killer whales live on the west coast, spending most of their time in the Salish Sea. They live in family groups known as J, K, and L Pod and stay together their whole lives, led by the oldest females, the matriarchs. Hunting only for fish, mostly Chinook salmon, they use echolocation and then share what they catch. You can tell them apart from any other orca in the Salish Sea. They have their own language and culture, and there are only 75 of them left. 75 unique dorsal fins, names, and personalities, and every one of them matters. When J-50 was born, it was incredibly exciting. We had gone as basically two years without a single southern resident calf being born in the population, and then here comes Scarlett, born to a mother who's getting up there in her years, kind of didn't expect her to give birth again, and then she did. She had all these toothaches on her. Her mom had trouble passing her, and uh, another whale bit the little baby, not very hard, but just enough to pull it out, and left these toothaches on her. So Scarlet was kind of a miracle calf, and she started this sort of chain reaction of all of these other births that happened in a short period of time. In a span of only two years, nine orcas were born, bringing the population back to 85. And the hope was high that maybe they'd be okay.
Then you look at the residents whose primary food source is salmon, and they are not doing very well. We will talk about kind of what's going on with them and what you can do to help. J1, Scanna. Scanna, J1. Hey, was that that HP that just went by? The boat is uh, named Sonic and uh, we named it after J52 after he passed away last year. Um, we've kind of done that with all of our boats as just a memoriam for the whale that passed away. Seeing that and obviously watching J52 pass away along with um, J54 and J28, it's that, that whole baby boom kind of, the high of that went low pretty quick. You can see that, you know, a normal population you would have the elders pass on and the young carry on. Uh, but we're noticing what's happening is that we're having a lot of the young ones die. People cared about these young orcas. But like most causes, awareness faded and most of the world moved on. But Gloria and I couldn't. These orcas are intrinsically tied to this ecosystem. They're an indicator species. And they're telling us that the Salish Sea is in trouble. The fact of the matter is that what's happening to the Salish Sea orcas is a side effect of an overarching issue, which is that we're verging on ecosystem collapse. When we go out on the water, you kind of see this amazing ecosystem being used as like a playground and also as an economic highway. You get all kinds of vessels zipping around all over the place, enjoying the beauty. But then we also have these enormous ships. So we're talking not only oil tankers, but other bulk carriers, car carriers, freight ships, which is really a symbol of our globalized system. It's only getting busier here. There's huge projects planned for British Columbia. What they're proposing is a seven-fold increase in tanker traffic. That's a 700% increase. And like already there's too much tanker traffic. That in combination with the fact that there's a tremendously diminished amount of Chinook salmon available, that makes it very hard for them. So that's why we're seeing emaciated orcas. They are literally starving to death. I saw the overfishing and it, I was just sort of baffled, you know, how can we take all the fish and still have a fish eating population of whales? It's still the same problem, there's not enough fish. We're blocking the dam access to the rivers. It's just plain and simple, we're not letting the fish get up to where they need to spawn. I'm gonna keep on shouting. Uh, I, there's nothing else I wanna do with my life at this point. They, they don't have a voice, they need a human. They need, oh, probably 300 million humans to shout for them. We have increasing amount of public interest and a great crowd, so this is clearly important. never seen anything like this. People coming together like this for another species. It's incredible. In 2018, governments, scientists, community leaders, and more came together to create the ORCA Task Force. Their goal was to find real solutions to protect the southern resident killer whales. It created hope that the orcas would get the help they needed. We're kind of at a 
turning point. You can yeah. sense it. This is a, this is a, yeah. we're at a turning point, but we've got to keep pushing. Saving the southern resident killer whales won't be easy. The issues behind their endangerment are complex, and there's a lot ahead of us if we're going to fix what we've broken. We're going to keep pushing. There are few places left on Earth like this, where salmon flow in the millions upstream each fall, and the bears gorge themselves into hibernation where whales can be heard singing and old growth forests still stand today. This place is alive. Our journey to understand this interconnected ecosystem has only just begun. I think I do have a strong bond to the whales, but I'm, I try not to cry when they die or be overly emotional about it. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just the documentarian here, but it's not easy to watch them all die off. 